Alright guys, back to our series on uh, strategy and methodology. One thing that uh, I hear a lot of times is an old methodology called distance equals time. And what it's based on, and you'll see this in the law enforcement world a lot, uh, if you've ever heard of the 21 foot rule, it's based on that, that uh, it would take an individual roughly second, second and a half to cover 21 feet uh, to be on you. So therefore, police officers are encouraged to maintain a certain distance uh, from individuals that are uh, perceived to be potential threats in the hopes that that distance will buy them time to react and draw their weapons to be able to make decisions and go to their tools and so on and so forth. But the question that I want to ask is, from a civilian perspective, does distance equal time? Uh, so let's, let's look at it. All right, we have... An individual here, um, green guy, red guy here, and they are roughly five feet apart. Now, the average male running speed is 15 mile an hour, which comes out to 22 feet per second. So in one second, this individual can cover 22 feet. So that's basically roughly where you get the 21 foot rule. Uh, the average draw time from concealment, so if you're in a situation where you're within five feet of an individual and it looks like it's going to escalate, and this individual goes to pull his garment and access his weapon, on average it takes somebody cold a second and a half to be able to draw from concealment and to get that first shot off. So in a second and a half, how far could you get at 22 feet per second? Well. 22 feet per second, second and a half, you could cover 33 feet of distance, which basically is uh, a more realistic figure than the 21 foot rule. So, if I'm starting out at 5 feet away from a potential attacker, and I see this individual go for his weapon, our natural tendency, our natural reaction is to run for safety. How far could I get in a second and a half if I'm 5 feet away? Well. I would get 33 feet plus my 5 feet, so that gives me 38 feet away. All right. I'm doing this mathematically to kind of give you an idea to show you where the methodology is coming from. So I can cover 38 feet in a second and a half. Is 38 feet a distance that is safe enough for me to be able to uh, get outside of the range of that particular weapon? Let's just say uh, it's a pistol, okay? So he's pulling and he's drawing 9 millimeter pistol. On average, people can typically uh, shoot a man-sized target. Anybody with any sort of practice or training can hit a man-sized target from 25 yards. Some people more accurately than others, but most people can hit a man-sized target 25 yards, which is 75 feet. So I can cover 38 feet. 78 feet is my minimum safe distance to get out of the... Uh, the line of that that particular projectile can I cover that distance in a second and a half in the time that it takes him to clear his garment and draw can I cover that minimum distance absolutely not I can make it about halfway so that being said if my choice is I'm five feet away and I have that choice to either run back and break contact or push in and uh, become the aggressor, what is my best option? Well, going back to the sweep that we did, one of the things that I had mentioned is that in order to be able to thwart an opponent, I need to know what it is he needs to be able to accomplish his task. So one of the things that he needs is he needs composure. In order to be able to access his tools, he needs to be able to clear that garment and he's going to need a certain degree of composure. Regardless of whether or not we're talking about a sociopath, a psychopath, this particular individual is obviously going to exert a certain level of stress once he makes that conscious decision to draw his weapon and to shoot. So he's going to require a certain level of composure to be able to do that. Second thing is he's going to need a shooting platform. Now we've talked a little bit about that shooting platform. Regardless of how you're shooting, you're going to need a shooting platform of some kind in order for you to be able to place effective rounds onto a target.
third thing that he's going to need is he's going to need opportunity. So in order for him to be able to shoot me, he's got to have the opportunity to shoot me. Now, one of the things that, that we see a lot is breaking contact and running away is not necessarily going to be my course of action because that projectile is moving in a straightward direction and unless I'm running some sort of serpentine pattern, running straight away is not going to change his point of aim at all. So if he needs composure, shooting platform, and opportunity to be able to shoot me, and I am five feet away from him, can I effectively mitigate any of these things by running away? Can I take away opportunity by getting beyond the 75 feet? No, we've already done that mathematically. I can only make it about half the distance at a full sprint. So, I'm five feet away. How long would it take me to cover that five feet at that 22 feet per second? Well, roughly a quarter second. So you take that five feet, 22 feet, uh, feet per second, comes out to a quarter second. So I can get in there and I can be within contact distance of this individual within a quarter second. At that po point, can I now affect his composure? Absolutely. Because drawing under stress, unless it's something that you are trained to do and you practice repeatedly, drawing under stress is difficult as it is let alone under threat of, of bodily harm, under threat of uh, physical contact with another individual. Shooting platform. If I close that distance within a quarter of a second and I now begin to mess with his composure, can I also mess with his shooting platform? Absolutely I can. By making contact with this individual, I can knock him off balance, I can throw him to the ground, I can get control of that weapon. Regardless, he is not going to be able to establish a a proper shooting platform uh, if, if I'm within that body contact distance of him. So three, opportunity. He has the opportunity to shoot me. What gives him the greater opportunity? Me pulling away from him or me getting in contact distance with him and ending up in a potential scuffle? I would argue that by me pulling away I give him greater opportunity. Now we're assuming that there's no cover for, for me to actually have access to. But for me to pull away and run back is going to give him greater opportunity to assault me than for me to move in on him. So the fact of the matter is, is that distance does not equal time. Control equals time. And I would challenge anybody to go check out uh, any of the early UFC fights, uh, any of the, uh, the vintage video of the Gracies going from school to school and challenging individuals. I want you to see a particular pattern there. As these individuals sit outside of range, we talked a little bit about range. As they sit outside of punch range and kick range, what they do is they wait for the opportunity to quickly close that gap and to get inside. We've talked about how that works, getting inside perimeter. Once I get inside, now I can control the individual. If I am trying to foul somebody's draw, and it takes an average individual a second and a half to clear his garment and draw, how much longer would it take him to clear his garment and draw if I'm pulling his hands away, if I'm stuffing his, uh, his draw and I'm, I'm anchoring that hand on the pistol? Would it take longer than a second and a half? Absolutely, yes it would. So one of the things that we need to look at is that distance in no way equals time. What equals time, what buys you time to react is control. Control of the fight, control of the opponent. And I can control the opponent and control the fight by knowing what it is he needs in order to be able to attack me and then systematically taking those things away from him. So you guys kind of pay attention to that. Think about it a little bit and uh, think about this in the context when we start laying in uh, some more of these techniques and stuff on video. All right? You guys train hard.